Praise the Lord, beloved. Praise the Lord. And today, we're going to give a, a message about uh, the Lord and how He speaks. The Lord Jesus Christ, how He speaks. The Lord Jesus Christ, our God, God Almighty, uh, He speaks both plainly, you know, literally like what He says is exactly literally what He's saying, but He also speaks in parables where what He's saying is not literal. You know, you don't take it literally what He's saying. Um, he speaks in both ways. So, um, we're going to be talking about that a little bit because um, the Bible talks, the Word of God talks about those who understand God are the ones that's going to bear fruits. They are the ones that's going to make it in the end. You see, those who actually understand Him when He speaks. So, when God is speaking parables, sometimes people don't understand. And because they don't understand, it doesn't benefit them. Sometimes they might not understand that he's speaking to them in parables and not and not literally. And so they don't understand that he's speaking to them in parables. They take what he's saying literally. And because they take what he's saying literally, they miss the mess they miss the message. So so we're gonna be talking about that a little bit and we're gonna go straight to the scripture. We're gonna go to the book of um, John chapter six, verse fifty one down. And from there you will see where the Lord was uh, speaking, the Lord Jesus Christ was speaking in a parable, but there were people that missed it. Um, they did not understand that that um, that he was speaking in a parable. You see, he was speaking in the parable. And so when you go to the book of the book of John, the book of John chapter six, verse fifty one. John chapter six, verse verse, verse fifty one. This is what you read. John chapter 6, verse 51. John chapter 6, verse 51. This is what the scripture says. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. Verse 52. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He who eats my he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father. So he, so he who eats me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven. So, so you see what he says? When he says that the people were confused because they didn't understand that he was speaking a parable when he says to them that, that they have to eat of his flesh and drink of his blood for them to have eternal life. They thought that he was saying for them to literally take him and eat him. And take him and cut him up, put in a pot, boil, and eat him. They thought he was saying to cut him up, take the blood out, put it into a bottle and drink it. They thought that he literally was saying that. They thought he literally was saying when he says to take his flesh, to eat his flesh and drink his blood... They, they thought that he literally was saying to them to do that, for them to have eternal life in them. But that was not what Jesus was saying. He was not saying that literally, for them to literally take his body and eat it, and take his blood and drink it for them to have eternal life. He did not mean it literally, because he was speaking to them a parable. A parable of 
the kingdom of God, a parable of salvation, of eternal life, for them to be saved. What he was saying for them, what he was saying to them, this parable, this is what the parable means when he said that, when he said for them to eat his flesh and drink his blood for them to have eternal life. What he was saying to them is that his flesh, which is his body, was going to be given up, was going to be offered up on the cross for them. And his blood also was going to be shed on the cross for them. And the way they received that flesh, that, 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 that body that was going to be given up for them on the cross was by faith, was by believing. And the way that they were going to receive his blood that they were to drink for them to have eternal life and the, and the body for them to eat for them to have eternal life. The way they were going to eat the, his body and drink his blood was by faith, by faith, by faith in him, by believing that his flesh and his blood was offered for them on the cross for the forgiveness of their sins. Once they receive that by faith, then they eat the flesh, and that means that they have eaten the flesh and they have drank his blood. And also, what that also represents, when he says for them to eat his flesh, and drink his blood, what that parable means is also that Jesus himself, he is the word of God. That's why he says he's the bread of life. See, the word of God is the bread. See, when you eat the bread, that is the word. So the, the word of God is Jesus. So when he told them to eat the flesh, to, to eat the flesh and drink his blood, to eat him and drink his blood for them to have eternal life, he was talking about them receiving him, receiving his word. You see, and when they receive his word, then his word, that means they have eaten him. They have eaten the word. And so when they receive the word, then the word will abide in, in them. And when the word abide in them, because they have eaten it, they have received it, then they will have eternal life in them, which is Jesus Christ. See, they will, they will receive the life of Jesus in them because they have eaten him, they have received him, and they have, uh, they have received the word, and they have believed the word. And they have walked, they have lived in the word, they have walked the word. So that's what he was talking about. He was talking about uh, that. But they took it literally when he said for them to eat his flesh and drink his blood. See, that's why the Lord Jesus Christ, you see, when you read the scripture, the Bible tells us the scripture is, 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 is spiritual. The word of God is spirit. It's not flesh. It's not meant to be understood with carnal mind. You see, it's not meant to be understood with a carnal mind. It's meant to be spiritually discerned. That means the Word of God, you have to be spiritual to understand the Word of God. And how do you become spiritual? You have to receive Jesus. You see, you have to receive Jesus Christ in your life as your personal Lord and Savior. You have to make Jesus your Lord and your Savior. You have to receive Him. Receive what He did for you on the cross, that He went to the cross and died for you for your sins and paid the penalty for your sins, which is death, by dying for you, by giving his body up for you on the cross and his blood, by shedding his blood for you on the cross. Once you believe that, to receive that by faith, then you receive Jesus, you see? And when you receive Jesus Christ, you believe in that, then, then you receive Jesus, then you believe in that, then you are born again. You have received, you are born again. And the Bible says, once we're born again, then, then we have a new life. We receive a, the life of Christ in us. So that means we're going to start to live like Christ, which is in righteousness and holiness. We don't have the old life anymore, the life of sin. So that means we got to turn away from sin and not live a lifestyle of sin because sin is, is the old life. That's the life. It's not the life of Christ. The life of sin is the life of the devil, which leads to, to hellfire, which leads to death. You see? So, so, um, so once we receive Christ, we, 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 by faith, we're supposed to receive the Holy Spirit. And when we receive the Holy Spirit, then we're born again. We're born again by receiving the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God dwells in us, then we're born again. That's what the Bible tells us. Jesus says, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. So we have to be born of the Spirit of God. We have to be born again. So when the Spirit of God come and dwell in us by receiving Jesus, by having faith in Christ Jesus, 
You see, no, then what happens no, is Jesus. the Spirit of God will enable us to understand the Word of God, which is Spirit. See, yeah. the Word of God is spiritually discerned. It's discerned by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God gives us the understanding of what the Word is saying. So, so, so that when God speaks, you can understand what He's saying. The Spirit will help you to understand what God is saying. So when God is speaking in a parable, the Spirit of God will help you understand what, what the parable means, what He's really saying. And when He speaks plainly, the Spirit of God will help you to make you understand that He's speaking literally, plainly, and not in a parable. So at this instant, when He was talking to them about them eating His flesh, for them to have eternal life and drinking His blood, it was a parable. It was not meant to be taken literally. But spiritual, people that are spiritual, people that really believe that Jesus is who he is, that he is the Son of God, that God sent him to, to die for us, to pay the penalty for our sin. So if we see forgiveness for our sins through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross, people that really believe in Jesus, that have faith in Jesus, will not turn away from Jesus. They will not turn away from him. They will continue to stay with Christ. And so when Christ, when Jesus says what he said, which was, if you do not eat of his flesh, or if you do not drink of his blood, then you don't have eternal life in you, then they will not turn away from him. Because they know he's from God. And they know he has the word of God. And so, they stay with him. They abide with him. They stay with him. And, and they stay with him and, and abide with him. You see? And those who are spiritual people, when God speaks also, they will understand what God is saying. You see, but others will not. People that have a carnal mind that don't have the mind of the spirit, people that that's not born again, when they when Jesus says that, they will be confused because they will not know that he's speaking a parable, and they will take what he's saying literally, and then as a result, they will misunderstood. You see, they will misunderstand what he's saying. So, so when Jesus said, he said, um, he said to them. He said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. So we, we, we all know Jesus did not physically mean for you to go. That means it was a parable he was speaking. He did not physically mean for you to go and take him and eat his flesh physically. And drink his blood physically for you to have eternal life. We know that's not what he meant. Because nobody did that. None of the disciples that was following him all the way to the end went and actually ate his flesh and drank his blood. Nobody did that. Because he, he was speaking in parables. He was talking about their salvation, how they ought to be saved in a parable. And the parable was... They have to eat of his flesh and drink his blood. And so it was. they had to understand what the parable was, what it means. When he when it said for them to eat of his flesh and drink his blood. And what, and what that means, again, is that it is the flesh that they have to eat is this flesh that was, to be, that was offered up on the cross. That's what he, he's talking about. And the blood that they are to drink was the blood that was shed for them on the cross. But it does not mean for them to... Physically eat it and drink it. It's spiritual. They spiritually eat it and spiritually drink it by faith. In other words, by faith in Him. When, once you believe, it's not that you're eating it like in, like you're eating it physically. It's not. It's not an eating that's taking place in in the physical realm. You know, it's a spiritual event that of of faith where you have faith in God because you have faith in Jesus. You believe that Jesus was sent for you. And died for you on the cross. And that means you now you believe that his flesh was given up for you on the cross. So once you believe that, then that's eating. That's in, in this in spiritual in spiritual language, spiritual in spiritual wording, that that is that represents you eating his flesh. Faith by believing uh, that his flesh was given up for you on the cross, that 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 that, that means that you have eaten it. You are eating the flesh. No. Believing that the flesh was given up for you, the flesh of Jesus Christ was given up for you on the cross equals you eating his flesh. See, spiritually, the spiritual words for, for okay, uh, you eat his flesh is you believe that his flesh was given up for you on the cross. The spiritual way of saying that you believe that his blood was shed for you on the, on the cross was that 
You drinking his blood. I got more You see, you drinking his blood. You see, that's why the Lord Jesus says the word that he speak. When you read the Bible, there's a place where Jesus says the word that he speak is spirit and it is life. You see, the word that he speak is spirit and it is life. He's speaking spiritually. So is it, when he's speaking yeah. spiritually, it's not to be understood with the carnal mind, with the way we understand things. When he's when he's saying that you eat his flesh and drink his blood, it's not literal. It's not the literal way that we understand eating a flesh and drinking a blood. No, that's not what he's saying. He's talking about the spiritual way of eating his flesh and drinking his blood, which is faith. He's talking about faith. He's talking about you believing. Believing that his his, his his body was given up for you on the cross. And his blood was shed for you on the cross. Once you believe that, you have already eaten his, 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 his flesh and drink his, drink his blood. See, that's what that means. So that's what the Bible says. You're saved by grace through faith. See, he's talking about salvation. How you're going to be saved. You see, by faith in him. That's what the Bible says in John 3.16. For God so loved the world... That he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He's talking about how you're going to have eternal life by faith in Christ Jesus, who was the, the flesh, whose flesh was given up for you on the cross, and whose blood was also shed for you on the cross. That's why he said, unless you eat of his flesh and drink of his blood, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. You, you will not have eternal life in you. Unless you eat of his flesh and drink his blood. Unless you believe. Unless you believe. You see? Unless you believe. Believe that his, his, his body was given up for you on the cross. And his blood was shed for you on the cross. Then you will not have eternal life in you. See, Jesus abided in you by faith. By believing. By believing in him. You see? So, so also, when, he's, when he talks about eating of his flesh... He says, it's, he says it's the bread that come from heaven. He says it's the bread of life. And he says, he says that um, if anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. He says it's the bread of life. You see? And the Bible tells you Jesus is the word of God. He's the word of God. And Jesus says he's the bread of life. So when he says for you to eat the bread, he's talking about the word. The word that he gives you for you to eat that word, for you to receive that word, so that word can abide in you. So when you receive the word of Jesus Christ, then the word of Jesus Christ come and abide in you. When you when you receive it by faith, by believing in it and practicing it, then it abides in you, it comes and abides in you. Then the words of Jesus come and abide in you, and the life of Jesus Christ, which is eternal life, is now given to you, is now abiding in you, because the word is abiding in you. The word of God is abiding in you. You see? So he's, when he's talking about eating his flesh and drinking his blood, he's also talking about the word. Because Jesus is the word. When, when Jesus says for you to eat him, to drink his blood, to eat him and to drink his blood, to drink him, to eat him and drink his blood, he is the word. So he's talking about you receiving the word. Eating the word. Receiving the word. The word that he gives you, you receive it and practice it. That means you eating his flesh and drinking his blood. You see, he also means that. So people that reject Jesus don't eat his flesh and do not drink his blood. People that which reject the word of God, which is Jesus Christ, the word that we read in scripture, in the New Testament, if we reject it, then that means we do not eat of the flesh of Jesus and we also do not drink of his blood. And if we don't do that, then we don't have eternal life in us. Because the word of God is eternal life. Jesus Christ is eternal life. For us to have eternal life in us, he, he has to abide in us. God's word has to abide in us. And how does God's word abide in us is when we abide in it. When we abide in God's word, then God's word abide in us by faith. By faith, we abide in the word of God. By faith, because we believe in the word, we, 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 we obey it. We, we practice it. We believe it and we practice it. You see? And, and by faith, we do those things. And then, and then by faith, the word of God comes. And abide in us. And then when he abides in us, that's eternal life in us. Christ Jesus living in us. And so that's why on the last day, he will resurrect those that died in him. Because they never died. It's only their body that died. But Christ Jesus, uh, uh, the eternal life of God was dwelling in them. That's why really they don't die. It's just the body that returned to the dust. 
So, so okay. So the words. So, so you see here again how God speaks. He speaks in a par. He can speak in parables, but he can also speak literally. But here he was speaking in parables when he says, "Unless a man eat of his flesh." Or drink his blood, he will not have eternal life in him. He was speaking in a parable, but if people, when people miss, don't understand that he's speaking in a parable, and instead take what he's saying literally, they will miss the message and they will not understand what God is saying. And because of that, they will turn away from God. That's why many people don't follow God or don't worship God today. That's why we have many atheists, people that are atheists, people that don't worship God. You know, uh, uh, the reason is because they don't understand God. They don't understand His Word, you see. So when people don't understand His Word, then they fail to follow Him because they don't understand Him. But people that understand God, they understand who He really is. They understand who He really is. And because they, they understand Him, they, they, they follow Him. They know He's a God of mercy. They know that He's a God of forgiveness. That's why He sent Jesus that gave up his flesh and his blood for them, for them to receive forgiveness for their sins. They know he's a God that does not desire that anyone perish, but desire that all should repent so they may have eternal life. So when somebody understands that God is a God of, of love and a, a God that loves us, that loves people and wants people to be saved, then they won't turn away from him. But people turn away from him because they don't understand God. They don't understand who he, who he really is. So because of that, they, they, they become atheists and they go another way. So so now so now you see the book of the book of um the book of um so you see the book of um, um let's go to the book of Matthew. We're gonna give you another example how God again is speaks in parables, and then we have to be spiritually minded so we can spiritually discern what God is saying because when God speaks is spirit. The word of God is spirit. So it has to be spiritually discerned. It's not to be understood with a carnal mind. You know, with the way we understand things on this earth. You see, it's not always that way. Sometimes God will use examples on the earth to, to, to give us understanding of what he's saying. But he also can speak to you in a parable. He can also speak to you in a parable. You see, and when he speaks to you in a parable, you have to understand it's a parable. It's not to be taken literally. And when we take it literally, when he speaks a word in a parable, then we can miss the message. And that's not going to help us in the end. You see, it is required, it is important that we understand the word of God for us to make it to heaven, to even uh, walk with Christ and understand Christ and understand God. We have to understand that he speaks both plainly and in parable. So when he's speaking, we have to understand, is this a parable or is this plain? Is it saying what he's saying literally or is it a parable? You see? And so I'm going to give you another example of where you see that God again, Jesus again, is speaking is, is speaking in parable. But here, this one I just spoke, I just used here, John chapter 6 verse 51 down, shows you that Jesus speaks in parables. It proves that to you, that Jesus doesn't always speak literally. Even when he says something directly, he's not speaking to you literally. He's speaking in parable. When he says to eat of my flesh, directly he's saying to you, he was saying in the Bible, unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you don't have eternal life in you. He was directly saying that, but he still did not mean it literally. It was a parable. So we know it's a parable because nobody did that. Nobody went to Jesus and ate him physically and drank him. And drink his blood. Because people had enough understanding. The people in those days. Uh, those, these disciples. Have enough understanding. By the spirit of God. They knew that that's not what he was saying. That he was not saying for them to go eat him. And drink his blood. They know he did not mean that physically. What he was saying was a parable. So that right there proves to you. That God speaks in parables. That Jesus speaks in parables. So it's not everything that Jesus says. That you take literally. Certain things is a parable. That means you need uh, uh, to spiritually discern. You need to spiritual. You need to spiritually discern what he's saying. So when you go to the, when you go, we're gonna find another example of that in the book of Matthew, chapter eighteen. When you go to the book of Matthew eighteen, what do you see? Matthew eighteen, you gonna find another example of where Jesus is speaking in a parable, 
And he's not saying, what he's saying is not saying for you to do it literally. It's not a literal thing he's saying, but you have to understand what he's saying. Matthew chapter 18. Matthew chapter 18, verse 9 down. Let's go to verse 8 first. If your hand, Jesus is saying, the Lord Jesus says, if your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or crippled than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into eternal fire. You see what Jesus is saying here? If you take him literally, you will miss the message. You will not know what he's talking about. You see, he says, if your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. And throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or crippled than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into eternal fire. Is that a parable or is that literal? Is he literally telling you to cut off your hands? Is he literally telling you to cut off your foot and throw it away? No. He doesn't mean that literally, just like he didn't mean for you to literally come and eat his flesh and drink his blood for you to have eternal life. So he's not literally telling you to, he's just speaking again a parable. You see, when he says to, to, if your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. He's talking about sin. The foot that is telling you to cut off or the hand that is telling you to cut off is symbolic. It it's, it's represents a sin. Something in, 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 in life that people can be engaged in that's causing them to sin. So whatever that thing is, Jesus calls it a foot or he calls it a hand. And he says, if it's causing you to sin, whatever it is, if it's causing you to stumble, cut it off. You see? Or whatever sin it is that, 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 that we are doing, cut it off. Because you will not be able to enter eternal life with it. You will not be able to go to heaven with it. It's better to cut it off so you can go to heaven without it than to keep it and go to hell. That's what he's talking about. You see? But why does he use the word, why does he use like hand or foot? He could have used something else. Why did Jesus choose to use, uh, to make it personal when he says, if your hand or if your foot, why does he make it so personal? You see, because, because, because uh, sin, because remember those things represent things that can be causing us to sin uh, or, it, or sin itself. Things that people are doing that is sinful. He's telling us to cut it off. Because he's, he's, he's using the word your hand and your foot to make it so personal is because sin, the moment a human being adopts a lifestyle of sin, that sin, they continue to do it. When they continue to do that sin, to live that sinful life, whatever situation that they're in or, 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 or whatever they're engaging that keep causing them to sin, it becomes a part of them. You see, sin, when somebody continually commits a specific sin, it becomes a part of that person. It becomes a part of you. It becomes your life, your lifestyle. It becomes the way you live. It becomes you. It becomes a part of you. That's why he's saying, if your hand. Because sin is now a part of that person. Because they live in it. That's why it says, if your foot, because sin becomes a part of that person. You see, it becomes personal now. That's why people, when you rebuke people of their sin, they can get angry at you. If you tell somebody, don't do this, this is this, this is wrong, this is sin, they can get mad at you. Why? Because they identify so well with that sin, that that sin become a part of them. When you're rebuking the sin, the thing that they're doing wrong, for them... You rebuking them. For them, you saying when you, for, for, they 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 feel um they feel it, they take it personal because that thing has become a part of them now. It's one they, they 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 become one. They become they're so connected with that sin because they commit it so much. They do it so much that they connected to that thing and they become one with it. So now when you try to separate them from the sin, 
You're trying to break the bond between them and the sin. When you tell them, don't do it, don't do it, they can take it personal. Because they and that sin has become one. Because of the life of sin that they're living. They become one with it. So when you rebuke sin, they're not happy with you. Because they're together. That sin and them, they, they, they have a bond. They have an agreement. They have a relationship. They have a friendship. You see, they're walking in it. They're living in it. They're dwelling in it. They're loving it. They're living that life. So when you say, don't do this, this is wrong, more than likely they will turn against you. See, that's why when somebody's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, when you begin to tell people, don't do this, this is sin, more than likely people will come and fight you. Sometimes they might even beat you up and punch you and do different things to you because they're going to feel, they're going to take it personal. Because they have, they have, the ones they're committing, they're living that lifestyle of sin, they become one with that sin. You see, they, they identify with that sin. The sin is, is, is them now. It becomes a part of them. You see, and when you try to separate somebody from what is a part of them, you know, and you're telling them what is a part of them is wrong, then they can really get angry with you. You see, and then they take it personal. Sometimes they will say different things. They will attack you because of that. You see, they will attack you. Some people will attack you. You see, that, that, that's the reason. Because it has become a part of them. The sin has become a part of them. That's why Jesus says, if your foot, if your hand, because your hand is a part of you, your foot is a part of you, and sin also can become a part of the people when they begin to live that lifestyle of sin. So that's why Jesus describes sin. Use, a, use an image. Use that image. Use hand. Use your hand, your foot as the image to give you a, 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 a good image. A true image of how sin can take over the life of a person. Sin can take a, a, the a life of a person so much, can take it over so much, that it becomes a hand. It becomes a foot. It becomes a part of this person. It can be even become an eye of that person. Because it becomes a part of them. So connected to the sin. You see? That's why people struggle with sin sometimes. They struggle because it, it's a part of them now. Now Jesus is saying that you have to cut it off. You have to cut it off. You see? That's why he's using the hand, the foot. You see? You see? He's using the hand, the foot. You know, to cut it off, cut it off so you can have eternal life. Then he says, if your hand or your foot causes you to sin or causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or crippled than to have two hands or two feet and be thrown into eternal fire. And now he goes, he says, and if your eye, you see, he's still using the, the connection, the imagery of connection to sin by using a specific part of the body to show you how, how connected the person can become to sin, that human being can become to sin. 